Now on to our example. An investor wants to target a specific rate of return for his portfolio while minimizing risk. This is a portfolio optimization application. So, the goal is to find the best combination of stocks that minimizes risk for a given return. The returns and variances and covariances between all the stocks are known and shown here. In this problem, the variables are the percentage allocations of the funds that we can invest in each stock. Let's define the decision variables. We can reserve cells C14 through G14 to hold the percentage allocations of the funds or the decision variables. Use your mouse to select the range. Now click the decision button and choose normal to define them as normal decision variables. To define the objective, the portfolio variance, I have defined a quadratic function at cell C18 to calculate the portfolio variance by a custom quad product function. Now, use your mouse to select C18 on the worksheet, then click the objective button. Choose min to define C18 as a normal objective to be minimized. We have two constraints. The first constraint is the total portfolio constraint, summing the allocations of funds to stocks, which is summing to 100% or 1. We need to set up one cell in the spreadsheet to represent the formulas of this constraint. Here I use cell H14, sum of all allocations. Now use your mouse to select this cell on the worksheet, then, then click the constraints button. Here choose the equality sign to define H14 as the left-hand side. In this dialog, now we can enter 100% or 1, and then click OK. Second is the total portfolio return, which is some product of allocations and stock returns, which must be greater than 9.5%, for example. We need to set up one cell in the spreadsheet to represent the formula of these constraints. Here I use cell C20. Now use your mouse to select this cell on the worksheet, then click the constraint button. Here choose the greater than or equal to sign and enter 9.5%, then click OK. You can see the objective, variable, and constraints in the model tab of TaskBank. Now we can hit the optimize button and get the results. Remember that we turn the guided mode off, so we directly get the solver result message. Solver found a solution, all constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. You can also check this out in the output tab of the task pane. So far in our example, we have used the solver and found the optimal portfolio with minimum variance for a given target rate of return of 9.5%. Let's generalize that. We can utilize parametric optimization to find the efficient frontier that is the optimal solution for several levels of portfolio return. To do this, let's choose cell D20 for example, and then click on parameters, optimization to insert a parameter. This dialog box will open. Let's input 8% for the lower level and 14% for the upper level as one of our stocks returns 14%. Now we have to modify the constraint right hand side to point to our parametric return rate. Let's click OK, double click portfolio return constraint instead of 9.5%, choose this sign and choose 8%. Now click OK. Now, let's go to the TaskBank Platform tab and set the number of optimizations to 10. We can click on Optimize button. The worksheet will initially display values for the last optimization. Yet, we can display any of the optimization results by changing the selection in the optimization number on the ribbon. Optimization 10, we can change it to optimization 1, optimization 4, or 7. Now let's click on Charts, Multiple Optimizations, Monitor Cells. Here choose the Objective, Portfolio Variance and click on this sign. 
and then click OK. PreSAR platform will run the 10 optimizations. This is the efficient frontier plot. You can click on this arrow and change some of the chart options. Or instead of optimization index, you can use the value of your parameter. Here are the summary of steps to define the optimization model components in Excel. An optimization model is just an ordinary what-if model plus a special selection of cells for decision variables, objective, and constraints. Start with organizing your data on the spreadsheet. Reserve cells to hold values of your decision variables. Reserve cells to represent objective function and enter a formula that calculates the objective function. And then pick other cells and use them to enter formulas that calculate your constraints.